All right, thank you uh, everyone. Um, I really want to, on behalf of the International Center for Ethno-Religious Mediation, our members, uh, some of whom are here, who have signed up for our membership, um, our staff, um, volunteers, those who have really worked hard to put this conference together, uh, our sponsors, we have a few sponsors, those who have really contributed um, money is very difficult to host a conference, a three-day conference in the heart of Manhattan in New York. Uh, those who know where you are in New York, the capital of the world, we know very close to the UN, just uh, how many blocks from here to the UN headquarters, how difficult it is to uh, put all that together. Uh, people have sacrificed, uh, spent uh, many nights without sleeping, uh, with the liberal resources we have as a new organization, an emerging center um, of excellence for ethnic and religious conflict resolution and peace building. So it's just uh, tough to do this. However, it's a journey that we have embarked on and a journey that will never stop. Because if we stop, you know, people are dying every day. Uh, look at the stories that we have heard from uh, colleagues, experts from many countries. These are indicative, very important points that really should challenge us to make this, not just as, um, you know, resolve to engage and become more serious, not just within the academic circle, in our research, Fields, but also in terms of practice and, and also activism and belonging to a social international network. Um, so what we have done here in our organization is to create an international network for you uh, in New York closer to the United Nations. So we created this, our role, our task is to belong, of, you know, have our official membership in the organization uh, where you can come every year to network, share your research, um, you know, learn from others. Every year we do this. So the only way to encourage us to continue, I'm still gonna be talking about this tomorrow. We're gonna be having a larger audience in the evening tomorrow. The only way to really encourage us is by signing up for our membership. And secondly, as a member of this organization, you have a voice. Um, you know, you come to a conference, you present your paper, we want to grow, we want to make this a movement. Um, so this is an alternative uh, thing we've created as a member of the UN Economic and Social Council. We have representation at the UN. Um, by the way, every year we invite the UN people to come to our conference because they have really adopted this as a place where researchers, practitioners from many countries around the world come together to, you know, kind of reflect on how to manage, resolve ethnic and religious conflicts. They do not have this kind of platform. What they have is, uh, you know, presidents, high-level people who are not even aware of what is going on in their various states. Uh, what they read is just those liberal prompts and, you know, the agenda and order, uh, the talking points presented to them. But you are the people who are really doing the research, you know. So uh, that's what we've created. Sign up for our membership on our website. You just go there. And you sign, sign up and you're a member of this organization. That's number one. Number two, we have the UN um, Under Secretary General the Under Secretary General to the uh, UN Secretary General. Uh, she's in charge of policy and the number three person within the hierarchy of the UN coming tomorrow to make a speech. Um, her name is Ana Maria Menendez Perez. Oh, she wants me to remove Perez, I'm sorry. So, Ana Maria Menendez. Uh, she was the ambassador of Spain to the UN, and she was also in charge of the Foreign Affairs Ministry in Spain. 
Uh, she was recently appointed by the UN Secretary General, the new one, uh, to head the policy um, and also become the Under Secretary General for Policy. Uh, the so she's going to be coming tomorrow, and we have in the evening the prayer for peace. So just note that we're not having anything during the day. What we're having tomorrow is the conference closing, which is a wonderful celebration for those who are around that you have to really participate in. We have New Yorkers, people from here, coming tomorrow to perform. Musicians are coming from 6 p.m. And we also have um, groups from different countries who are coming to prison. Um, they are diverse, ethnic, religious, music, and all dance, and all that tomorrow. A few of them. And we have a uh, flag celebration. Uh, so where all the flags uh, from many countries will be displayed, and then there's gonna be a flag dance, a flag celebration over a piano. So that is gonna be great. I invite you uh, to really participate from 6 p.m. until, it's gonna last until 9 p.m. tomorrow. The third thing I wanna talk about is the Journal of Living Together. So as you can see on that poster, uh, we have a journal paper. Uh, the journal papers uh, already published, but we're gonna release them before the end of this month. So those are collections from last year conference. Last year we had shared values on Abrahamic religious traditions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And the Interfaith Amigos were here. I think they are very famous people. Uh, by the way, they received uh, the award from ISO last year. But there were great presentations last year. And so most of the things we talked about here are already written. The good news about our organization is we do the conference, you do the research, you come present. It doesn't end here. Right now, we have a powerful journal. The editor-in-chief is Professor Bangura. He has five PhDs. Five, no one, no two, no three. The person that was here just right now, five PhDs. Um, you know, I'm struggling with one, but he's got five. And so, uh, and we have peer review members from top universities. You can go to our journal page, you know, read their profile. So it's really gonna be great. And that's what, what we wanna do. To change the narrative, we need to create a journal of living together. There is none, this is new. Journal of Living Together in Peace and Harmony. By the way, there were critics. Why should it be a journal of living together, right? It doesn't sound academic. I am within the university level, and many of, many of you are, so you have journal of peace studies, uh, journal of research, and all that. Studies, that must be studies, you know? But we don't want that. We also want to create room for practitioners to come and submit their papers, and so we have a reflective journal, right? that will you know, change the narratives and also help in policy development. So the audience is the academic field and then the, uh, those in policy. So um, your papers will be published, so you go, you work on your papers and you resend them and we send them to the peer reviewers and then they're gonna follow up with you. So the third is, the fourth is that if you are not coming to the prayer for peace, and you are leaving tomorrow or the next. On behalf of our organization, uh, we really want to appreciate your coming, and we pray for you that you return home safely and come back here next year. Next year is going to be great. We're going to be looking at the traditional systems of conflict resolution. Uh, the, uh, the flyers are on that table. Uh, so, if you are interested or know those who are working on the traditional indigenous systems of conflict resolution, please tell them. So, we have the king from Ghana to come and see what we're doing here. And next year, I bet you, we're going to have about 200 kings in New York, plus researchers, uh, academics who are working on the traditional systems of conflict resolution. So tell your kings, if you have them in your countries, from Africa, Asia, Latin America, uh, help us spread the word. But we want to contact all the kings 
the UN has a forum for war presidents. They come here every year. Uh, there is a religious uh, network, the King Abdallah Abdulaziz International Center for Interreligious Dialogue in, in Vienna. By the way, I'm in touch with them. Uh, so that is great. They're doing great work. Um, but there is none for traditional rulers. These are people who are mitigating and resolving conflicts at the grassroots levels every day, dealing with land disputes and nothing for them at the international level. They got no voice at the UN. So we are going to create a voice for them, learn from them, and then we enhance their skills through the research, new research findings from uh, scholars in the universities who are working on these issues. So we collaborate and learn from them, and the outcome will be to use all that to change policies. So that's basically what we're about to do, and it's going to be next year, so just want to say that. Um, thank you very much, and I will see you uh, if you're going tomorrow for the UN tour. It's going to be at 1.30, I think so. Um, information is on our website where you can register. Uh, you can ask your question here. And secondly, Anna Maria Menendez is going to have a session tomorrow at six, at seven o'clock during her speech uh, for Q and A. So she is the right person because she's in charge of policy at the UN uh, to ask her those questions. Thank you, and God bless you.